29th of October today, and on this wonderful cold and frosty morning, I've come to another of my favourite English cities. And I have to say I'm glad, very glad to be here today. This is Hereford. Hereford is a cathedral city and county town of Herefordshire. It lies on the River Wye, approximately 16 miles east of the border with Wales. With a population of nearly 60,000, it is the largest settlement in the county. I crossed the Old Wye Bridge, originally constructed of local Old Red Sandstone. Essentially of 1490, the bridge has been repaired many times and was widened in 1826. Hereford's origin suggests that it was a place where a body of armed men forded or crossed the Wye. Today it is known mainly as a trading centre for a wider agricultural and rural area. Products from Hereford include cider, beer, leather goods, nickel alloys, poultry, chemicals and cattle, including the famous Hereford breed. Reaching the T-junction with King Street, I turned left to Victoria Street. These are the best preserved sections of the city walls. Dating from the 12th or 13th centuries, the walls consist of large and rough blocks of local sandstone. It is reported that in some cases, naturally worn boulders from glacial deposits were utilised. The walls had semicircular supports of which traces are preserved. I turned into West Street and made a brief detour into Berrington Street to pass Aubrey's Arms Houses, an excellent timber framed building dating from 1630. Continuing along West Street, I turned left into Broad Street where standing in front of me was the tower and crooked spire of All Saints Church. All Saints Church has been a focus of Hereford life for over 800 years. A massive project of repairs and restoration took place in the 1990s. All Saints reopened in July 1997 and since then has gone from strength to strength with an average of over 3,000 visitors a week. The building is a church, a community centre and a cafe. It is a place where people of all faiths and beliefs are welcome to pray, worship, talk, eat a delicious meal or use the space for all kinds of performances and meetings. Walking along the high street I made my way into the very centre of the city. I turned left and walked northwards along Widemarsh Street. Soon I crossed the busy A438 before arriving at the next place of interest. St John Medieval Museum and Coningsby Hospital is on the site of the Blackfriars Monastery, which was a Dominican monastery, home of crusaders of the Order of St John. The museum and hospital was also an ex-servicemen hospital and is now within an attractive rose garden. Set within the garden is the stone preaching cross, one of the last surviving examples of such a cross. Visitors can learn about the foundation of the Coningsby Redcoat Hospital, probably the model for the Chelsea Hospital in London, as well as exploring the 13th century chapel, still used today by the Order of St John, and the museum, which explains the links between the Crusades, the Knights Templar and the Hospital of Knights. 
The remains of Blackfriars Monastery are directly beside the museum. Hereford isn't somewhere I knew from childhood, but I do have one vague recollection of coming here when I was still very young, living with my family in Chepstow, because we must have come to Hereford Market. I just have one image of my mind of being in the market and buying bags of fudge from the counter. I don't know why that sticks in my mind, but I just seem to remember this guy behind the counter putting fudge into a bag and then twisting it like that to seal the ends of the bag up. That is my first memory of coming to Hereford. <laughs> I followed Coningsby Street and walked on through St Peter's Cemetery, where I came to Venn's Arch, erected in memory of Amelia Venn, who worked actively with the church and aided Hereford's poor with her brother, Reverend John Venn. On the death of John Venn in 1890, a plaque was placed on the archway to commemorate his passing. He is known as one of the greatest benefactors of Herefordshire. Turning right along Commercial Road, I crossed the A438 again and walked back towards the city centre. Soon I entered High Town, a large open pedestrianised space in the centre of the city. On the north side, I could see the entrance to the Butter Market, currently housing around 55 market stalls. It has a long history of providing food produce in Hereford and is traditionally identified with the busy business and social culture of the city centre. This full-size statue of a Hereford bull was created by Brian Alabaster and installed in July 2012. The 5 foot 2 inch high bronze statue stands next to the old house and superbly represents Hereford's connection with the agricultural industry. The old house, now the black and white house museum, is a well-preserved, half-timbered Jacobean building, built in 1621 as part of Butcher's Row. In 1816, other buildings on the row started to be demolished, and now Old House is the only remaining house in the original row. The house has been used by butchers, ironmongers and bankers during its history. It became a Grade 1 listed building in 1952. As I walked just east of here, I reached St Peter's Square with its church, constructed of roughly shaped, weathered old and new red sandstone blocks, and was restored by Thomas Nicholson in 1880 to 1885. In the centre of the square is the War Memorial, designed by L. W. Barnard in the form of an Eleanor Cross. It was unveiled and dedicated in October 1922, in commemoration of around 2,000 Herefordshire men and women who gave their lives in the First World War. The Shire Hall was built in 1819 by Charles Heather. Today it is home to Hereford Crown Court. In front of Shire Hall is the Sir George Cornwallis Lewis Monument, a statue in green weathered bronze. I walked along St Owen Street and turned right down St Ethelbert Street. I reached St Ethelbert's Hospital, a row of former almshouses, the early 19th century rebuild of the 14th century original. This was a hospital in the medieval sense of a charitable institution for the housing and maintenance of the needy. It was Grade 2 listed in 1952. I turned south down a narrow passage, 
passing the castle pool on my left. Beyond the pool, I arrived at Castle Green. Hereford was a base for successive holders of the title Earl of Hereford, and was once the site of Hereford Castle. It was a base for repelling Welsh attacks, and a secure stronghold for English kings, such as Henry IV, when on campaign in the Welsh marches against Owen Glyndwr. The castle was dismantled in the 18th century, and landscaped into Castle Green. Right in the centre stands a memorial column to Lord Nelson, who was made a freeman of the city in 1802. The much restored castle cliff was the water gate of the castle and is the only piece of the stonework surviving. Now when I reached my mid to late teens, I started to visit Hereford a lot more regularly in those days. Now, that was the time when I used to travel on the buses all day around the Wye Valley in the Forest of Dean. And Hereford was actually the furthest away place that the bus company that ran those buses actually went to. So there were quite a few times where I came to Hereford on the buses. When I used to stay with my family in Chepster when I was that age, I used to travel on the bus from Chepster to Monmouth and then change at Monmouth and get another bus to Hereford. I'd spend a, a couple of hours in Hereford and I'd probably get a bus back to Gloucester which would run through Ross and Wye and then change at Gloucester again to get another bus back to Chepstow. They were good times. I really miss those days in a lot of ways. I passed the site of the medieval St Ethelbert's Well, but the only ancient part is a much defaced bishop's head in limestone, set into the wall. The rest is quite modern. Walking down Key Street, I turned left and entered the cathedral precinct. I decided to keep the cathedral to the last, however, so I walked over to the statue of Sir Edward Elgar, unveiled in 2005. The famous composer was a resident of Hereford, and the sculpture by Gemma Pearson portrays Elgar with his bicycle. When I first arrived in Hereford this morning, I said I was very glad to be here. Well, I said that because, apart from the fact that I am glad to be in lovely Hereford, I've just moved house recently. I moved house three days ago and I'm absolutely cream crackered. So I'm actually very glad to be away from that now and be on a very non-strenuous walk here in Hereford. I'd actually planned to come to Hereford a long time before I knew I'd be moving house and I thought I was going to have to cancel my trip here. I have had to change my plans considerably because there were other things I was going to do whilst I was in the area because I've booked my accommodation in the local travel lodge. But then I suddenly thought, stuff it, I've paid for my accommodation, I'm not going to lose my money, so I'm going to come down here and just have my day in Hereford as I originally planned. And I'm really glad I've done so because it's, it's lovely here. And, and as I say, after moving house, I am tired, more tired than I thought I was going to be. But because this is a, such a, a non-strenuous sort of walk today, it's sort of the perfect walk to do after I've had my move. So it's lovely so I'll be going back home tomorrow but I've got to face sort of having to unpack all my boxes because I literally moved in the day after I took mum home because she came up to help me move and then I came up for mum's yesterday so so yeah I'm really glad I've still come to Hereford even though I've had to change other plans considerably. Walking across to Broad Street, I found the Hereford Museum and Art Gallery. Through the generosity of James Rankin, president of the Woolhope Naturalists Field Club, it was opened as a free library and museum on the 8th of October 1874 and has since exhibited artefacts, fine art and decorative art associated with the local area. It was now time to visit the cathedral. Built on a place of worship used since Saxon times, Hereford Cathedral contains some of the finest examples of architecture from Norman times to the present day, including the 13th century shrine of St Thomas of Hereford, 
the recently restored 14th century Lady Chapel and the award-winning 20th century New Library building. Visitors can join the Hereford Cathedral Guides to explore the interior of the building at 11am and 2pm Monday to Saturday between Easter and the end of October or enjoy the gardens of Hereford Cathedral Tall at 3pm on Saturdays and Wednesdays in July and August. The award-winning Mappa Mundi and Chained Library exhibition houses the spectacular medieval map of the world and the cathedral's unique Chained Library, telling the stories of those national treasures through models, artefacts and changing exhibitions and displays. Other activities include concerts, recitals, the Three Choirs Festival in August every third year, exhibitions, events and a working stonemason's yard where skilled craftsmen use traditional methods to restore this ancient and beautiful cathedral. Amenities include on-site cathedral cafe, cathedral shop and toilets. From the cathedral, I made my way back over the old Wye Bridge to follow the riverside path as far as Victoria Bridge. Victoria Bridge is a footbridge crossing the River Wye from Mill Street to the Bishop's Meadow. It opened in 1898 to commemorate the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria. The suspension bridge features iron lacework and was built to replace an earlier ferry across the river. Well, that's my day in Hereford at an end, and it's been lovely. And as I said earlier, I think because of my recent move and feeling so jaded, today's easy walk has been the perfect walk to do, so it's been lovely. Well, I'm going to make my way back to my travel lodge now, and then I'll be going back home tomorrow. But before I leave Hereford, there are two people I'd like to say hello to whilst I'm here. Firstly, I'd like to say hello to Paul. Hi Paul, hope you're well. Now, Paul has a YouTube channel called Paul Outdoors, and he's done a lot of videos of walks around the Wye Valley. He's done lots in Wales and lots of parts of Herefordshire. And he's also done a lot of camping videos and camping related stuff. So he's got a really good channel, which is worth checking out. And secondly, I'd like to say hi to Mark. Hi Mark, and I hope you're well. And I'm really sorry that I've not been able to catch up with you on this occasion, despite being in Hereford today, but we will catch up soon, I promise you, and I'm really looking forward to doing so. Now, Mark is also known as Y Explorer, and he has a YouTube channel under that name. And that's also a really great channel that does lots of walks around the River Wye. He's done lots of other parts of Herefordshire, and he's also done lots in Wales and other places too. So please do check his channel out. It's absolutely brilliant. Well... That's it, I'm off to my travel lodge now.